Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, we take a look at Singapore's para badminton team as it prepares to take on the best in the region at the ASEAN Para Games. And we're back in the Middle East as Dubai takes another step in their rapid badminton development with the launching of national training centers. The 8th ASEAN Para Games takes center stage in Singapore next week and about 1,400 athletes from 11 Southeast Asian countries will battle for honors in becoming the region's best in 15 sports. The host nation is hoping the games will help raise the profile of disability sports and its athletes in the country. We treat everyone with people with disabilities. You know, we look at their ability rather than their disability. So we see them as what they can do. Just because they have disability doesn't mean they cannot do it and we should disqualify them from, from sports. For, for people with disabilities, sports is another avenue for them, you know, for them to live better through sports. Badminton Unlimited stopped by the Yochu Kung Sports Hall where the Singapore Para Badminton team was training. We wanted to find out about the development of the sport in the country and how their preparations for the games were coming along. We are all very excited, you know, it's counting down the, to the number of days, you know. Uh, our team has been training very hard, all of them are getting ready, you know, putting on extra hours of training and it's, it's all coming to fruition, you know, just uh, with the games just one week away and everybody is ready and gearing, ready for the games to start. A modest squad of five players will represent Singapore in para badminton. For three players, it will be their first appearance in a major event and they are looking forward to their debut on the international stage. I feel very excited because like, you got your home, you got a home supporter and all your family members and your friends are going to be supporting you at the Games. I will look forward to playing in other countries yeah, because not, not, yeah, not many people get to play with other country players. Yeah, and you get to experience and improve while you're playing. Leading the Singapore para badminton team is the country's most accomplished player, Tae Ming. With gold in men's singles in the 2009 and 2011 ASEAN Para Games, the shuttler is the nation's best hope for a medal. Um, preparation has been doing good, doing good. I um, have been reminding myself uh, to be injury free. I think that's the most important. And as well as um, telling myself to be disciplined um, in terms of rest and recovery. Most importantly is to enjoy the process. Yeah, that is very important. This will be Tay's fourth ASEAN Para Games and the two-time gold medalist is modest about expectations of a third gold. Firstly, it will be definitely an honour. Secondly, it will be a bonus. Um, okay, the reason is because um, the difference because between the last ASEAN Para Games and the upcoming one in December is that um, I have up class, up my category. Yeah, uh, I was previously play, playing uh, SU4. Uh, then right now I'm playing in SU5, even a tougher, tougher uh, class. So yeah, if I were to stand a podium for this upcoming December, I would say it would be a greatest achievement for me. Medal hopes aside, the bigger aim is to create greater awareness of the sport in Singapore and the administrators believe the ASEAN Para Games has provided the perfect platform to achieve this. This APG is a very good way of great awareness because a lot of players didn't know that actually they have a badminton para team. So from there, from all the medias, they are able to assess, you see. So they, maybe they'll slowly come to look for our association, SDSC, for more information. You know, hopefully through the ASEAN Para Games in Singapore, with, with the awareness and outreach that is created, more people will step forward and approach us, you know, and that's where we can uh, grow the sport even faster. With the sport making its debut in the 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games, the island nation recognises the need to increase their numbers and to expand the Singapore team to include wheelchair and short stature categories. We just started the wheelchair group. You know, I think it is very early at the infant stage. We, we basically just started the wheelchair group, I think sometime in May. 
it started because of ASEAN Para Games. So that was the catalyst for us to try to recruit, to go all out in our recruitment and we managed to find this uh, wheelchair group. Unfortunately, they will not be representing because they are not ready, you know, it's just like, so that's why we are supporting this program, the wheelchair group. So we are continuing this program and hopefully in the years to come, they will slowly be able to reach their potential. I think another area, the short stature, that is also another group that uh, I'm also keen, you know, to, to look into it next year to see how we can have actually support. All it takes is just one or two to start off and then you will slowly go for that. The newly formed Singapore wheelchair team recently participated in an invitational badminton wheelchair tournament in Taipei, and their first international experience was an eye-opener. Wowed by the standard of badminton they've witnessed in Taiwan, the players returned home determined and motivated to improve. Our team just started, so now um, after seeing like what we're up against, we know that we have to up our training, we have to be more tactical, we have to be, we have to um, be stronger. And we all agreed that like, um, even though we lost, like this was good exposure and we, we want to increase training, we want to uh, really compete on another level. There's still a lot more work to be done, but the Singapore Disability Sports Council is moving in the right direction and have plans in place to take para badminton to the next level. The upcoming ASEAN Games will surely put a spotlight on their homegrown athletes and give the sport greater exposure. We just want you all to do your best, you know, and to show um, Singapore people with disabilities can actually also do sports. From everyone at Badminton Unlimited, we'd like to wish Team Singapore and all nations participating all the best for the 8th ASEAN Para Games. Uh, pass from uh, Indonesia. Uh, because they are quite strong in uh, jabbing, you know, so it's, um, you need to have a strong hands and you need to have strong jabs to counter them. Uh, 1996 Vietnam Open because I won the title and it was the first international title for me and it fell on my 21st birthday. Uh, committed. It can be anything between a bracelet, you know, a pendant, something to put in the bag and things like that. I, th I think they worked. <laughs> it's time for some trivia. We want you to tell us who this person is. I am a left-hander. I am a double specialist. My partner and I were the first Indian pair to win a medal at the BWF World Championships. We give you the answer later in the show. After the break, we find out how Dubai's launching of their national training centers is expected to reap rewards in the near future. Ever since the Dubai Sports Council and BWF signed an agreement last year to bring the best shuttlers in the world to the Emirate for the season-ending Dubai World Super Series Finals and to promote and develop badminton, there has been a sharp rise in the uptake of the sport. Badminton Unlimited has brought you a number of initiatives that were undertaken as the spread of the sport gained momentum in the UAE. This week, we bring you the latest on the brand new Shuttle Time Dubai local training centers. The Shuttle Time Dubai Training Center actually is the second stage of the Shuttle Time teacher course. Uh, when we deliver the course for the teachers and teachers uh, teaches the children at the school level. And this is, comes as a second stage, they can play after school. 
uh, we provide them uh, six hours per week that they can play badminton. So, and it's focused on Emirati participation. We have around one, 150 boys and girls training in four, four training centers around Dubai. The schools catering solely to children between the ages of 7 to 15 from the UAE will act as a talent identification and development pathway for those with ambitions of playing the sport professionally. The idea of this also to identify the talents for UAE in the future. So we have a big number at the moment, more than 150 as I told you, but in the future we need to identify the talents and which players actually can represent the country in the future. The training centre represents just one element of the grassroots scheme put in place less than 18 months ago. Shuttle Time's focus was also on training those responsible for teaching the children. Many of those who participated in the training initiatives have graduated and are now using their newfound knowledge at the training centres. The coaching staff is interesting in these training centres because they all come through the development programme that we have done in the last year. So all the teachers, they have gone through the teacher education, the shuttle time teacher course, and also the coaches, they have graduated from the BWF coach education level one. At each training center, we provide expert coach plus two uh, teachers. When I came here, they were already, majority of them were already playing badminton. They needed uh, refinement, proper technique introduction, correction of grip, shots, uh, they needed to get uh, to see the professional side of badminton as well because they were out there to participate in the Shuttle Time Dubai School Championships. So they needed to know a little bit of line judging, umpiring. Uh, so it, it was uh, fun, uh, but some serious training sessions as well. The students are certainly enjoying the experience and beginning to see progress. Um, I like my new coach because um, um, I learned many things uh, from her. I learned how to uh, be running in a badminton and doing how to be playing games. And if that wasn't enough, getting to mix with some of the best players has given them plenty of motivation. During our stay in Dubai, former men's singles world number one Peter Gaeda and India Open champion Kidambi Srikanth who were in town, dropped by to watch and play with some of the aspiring shuttlers. Introduced Mr. Gade and Shrikant uh, through Google and their, uh, you know, Wikipedia, what they have been doing. So they were looking forward and two of the girls went this morning at the prize distribution. So they had seen, so they came back to the school and they were talking about Mr. Gade. So full of excitement. That's where it all started for me, for all of the players being stars today. It all started uh, at the grassroots level, so that's where we have to start and promote the game as well. We all have a big passion for badminton. Uh, I th I'm sure for all, I speak for all of the, the current stars as well, you know. Uh, um, they come from a small club, from a small environment, local environment. Uh, so I think all of us would like to contribute back to that. Those with a stake in the sport are hoping to capitalize on this momentum. There are plans to set up a federation and develop a national team to call their own. These may seem lofty ambitions, but having achieved so much in so little time, nothing seems impossible at the moment. Without the Emirati participation, we are not going to have a strong country without the local uh, participation. And we hope throughout this program also, this will support our plans to form a UAE national federation. Out of 50, I am honestly expecting at least 10 will uh, sustain and improve in the standards so that uh, one day when we have the federation, they will be able to uh, represent the country. That's my dream. Earlier in the show, we asked you to name this person. I am a left-hander. I am a double specialist. My partner and I were the first Indian pair to win a medal at the BWF World Championships. The answer is Jwala Gutta. Jwala and her partner Ashwini Punapa had a sensational win at the 2010 Commonwealth Games at home in New Delhi. The pair enjoyed a memorable 2011 too, 
One of their finest performances was at the BWF World Championships, as their semi-final finish ensured they became India's first women's doubles medalists. They continue to improve, and in 2015, the pair reached their highest ranking of 10th in the world. The MetLife BWF World Super Series circuit came to a season's end last weekend at the Yonex Sunrise Hong Kong Open 2015 as a host of international shufflers made a last push to qualify for the Dubai World Super Series finals. First up were mixed doubles finals as China's Zhang Nan and Cao Yunlei took on compatriots Liu Cheng and Bao Yixin. In what was a repeat of August's World Championships final, Third seeds Liu and Bao were bidding to finish on top of the podium this time around. But after clinching the Tai Hot China Open the week before, Zhang and Zhao weren't to be denied their second successive World Super Series title. The reigning world champions defeated Liu and Bao in three games 21-17, 17-21, 21-17. The women's singles final was next, and Spain's number one, Carolina Marin, went up against Japan's Nozomi Okuhara. World number nine, Okuhara, had beaten the Spanish world champion last year in this competition and was hoping for a similar outcome for this one as well. But after an hour and 25 minutes, it was her Spanish opponent who came out on top. Marin victorious after three games, 21-17, 18-21, 22-20. The men's singles finals followed as Malaysia's Li Chong Wei faced China's Tian Ho Wei. Former world number one Li was in red-hot form going into this contest, having already grabbed titles in China and France. Despite the best intentions of his Chinese opponent, the Malaysian star was always in control throughout the match. Lee completed his hat-trick of World Super Series titles after two games. Final score, 21-16, 21-15. Another all-China affair took place, and this time it was in the women's doubles final, when Tianqing and Zhao Yunlei took on Tang Yuanqing and Yu Yang. World champions they may be, but Tian and Zhao knew they had to be at their best against a pair who had defeated them at the recent Tai Hot China Open. Focused and determined from the start, Tian and Zhao stuck to their game plan and comfortably won the match. The final score read 21-15, 21-12 to the world number five duo. Concluding the day was the men's doubles final, and it saw Korea's world number one tandem, Lee Yong Dae and Yu Yun Sung, going up against Denmark's Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen. Ever since clinching this year's All England title, the Danes have struggled for form. They've done well to get to this final, but against the unstoppable Koreans, Bo and Mogensen just couldn't keep up. Lee and Yu powered their way to their fifth World Super Series crown for 2015 in three games, 21-7, 18-21, 21-18. When we get back, we shine the spotlight on a sister and brother from badminton hotspot Penang, Malaysia, hoping to follow in the footsteps of their iconic predecessors. This week's Players of the Week are China's women's doubles pair Tianqing and Zhao Yunlei. The world number no. 5 duo clinched the Yonex Sunrise Hong Kong Open crown last weekend at the expense of compatriots Tan Yuanting and Yu Yang. Despite having limited opportunities to play together this year, the reigning world champion's latest win was the strongest evidence yet that they're still the pair to beat in their category. When families and sport mix, they often make for a glorious cocktail. The nurturing environment a family provides can give athletes that extra edge. Babington's no different. Previously on this show, we've seen how a number of Malaysian shuttlers are profiting from their sibling rivalry. This week, we add a brother and sister combo from Penang. 
Although they share the family name of the most famous badminton player in the country, there's no blood relation, but they're certainly hoping to emulate his achievements. She is Shun Mei. He is Shun Yang, and we are from Lee family. My favorite player is Sato Lee Chong Wei because I like his fighting spirit on the court. My favorite badminton player is Sato Lee Chong Wei because of his determined spirit when he's on the badminton court. Our cameras were in the Malaysian coastal state to get to know two of the latest talents to roll out from the Penang Badminton Association. It's here that the likes of All England winner Lee Chong Wei and newly crowned World Junior Champion Go Jin Wei began honing their skills. And now, the state hopes to unleash more in the form of the Lee siblings. Shun Mei's 16, while Shun Yang's 14, and they make up the younger two of four siblings in the Lee household. I currently studying in Methodist Girls School in Penang, and my favorite subject is science especially biology. I started playing when I was seven years old. At that time, my father liked to watch badminton tournament on a show and stimulate my interest to play badminton. Actually, we have a very close relationship with them. We always uh, spend uh, some time with them, just like what uh, our swimming together and reading. Uh, sometimes we also hiking together. Like a best friend, I think. <laughs> every, I think everything they are, uh, when they are back from school, they can tell me about the school thing. They made an early impression with their local club, Art Sport. Shun Mei was selected for the state team after winning the local girls' singles and doubles titles for her age group in 2010, before Shun Yang followed her example in the boys' equivalent categories three years later. Being part of the Penang setup has given them much needed experience. I became a single and double champion under 12 state competition. Over 100 people competing in 2013. I feel very proud and honored to be part of the Penang state team. They always help me during training and they'll try to push me hard. Uh, to make me a better player. I improve a lot, including my stamina, my skills, after I joined them. Both brother and sister have since amassed numerous domestic titles, including wins at this year's National Junior Circuit. It matters little that they've yet to compete as a mixed pair. The siblings know they'll always have each other's backs. We don't partner each other during competition, but we normally play mixed double during training and also for fun. As a sister, I feel proud to have a brother like him. He has a very good achievement in badminton. So I will try to help him when, when he has problems with the badminton. But even as they continue to show progress, the Lee siblings still have areas in their game to work on. As for Shun Yang, I will say that he is quite weak in mental. Talk about his physical, his skill, everything is good. Only sometimes his mental is down a little bit. As for Shun Mei, she is weak in endurance. So each and every year we are trying to work out on this aspect. Both brother and sister are working hard to attract the attentions of the national team selectors. And once they do, the siblings know anything's possible from then on. If I get the opportunity to go in BAM, then I will try my very best to achieve my dreams. Lee Shun Mei and Lee Shun Yang are raw young Penang talents, waiting to do their bit for Malaysia just like their predecessors. Watch out for them, because there might be another set of Lees making their mark on the international arena in the near future. Before we go, let's find out what's happening on the international circuit with our Badminton Unlimited calendar.
next week on Badminton Unlimited. It's our 100th show and we're celebrating as we report from the destination of next year's Olympics, Rio de Janeiro. See you next week.